This tutorial is designed to provide an overview of how to analyze wideband tympanometry results in order to identify different pathologies. It is important to remember that the graphs used in this tutorial are examples and real life results will display deviations from these examples. Wideband tympanometry results should be interpreted as part of a test battery alongside case history, audiometric data and otoscopic findings. Acicular discontinuity typically presents with a lower resonance frequency than normal, below 1000 Hz, because it is a mass-dominated pathology. Inspection of the single frequency 226 Hz tympanogram might yield a larger peak than normal, which would also be found in the wideband average tympanogram. You could expect to see an increase in the absorbance below 1000 Hz, with a dip between 2.5 and 3.5 kHz, which then recovers in the highest frequencies. Wideband tympanometry results will vary when otosclerosis is present, depending on the severity of the condition. This makes it a useful tool for monitoring the progress of the disease. As otosclerosis is a stiffness-dominated pathology, it is expected that the resonance frequency will be higher than normal and will increase as the severity of the condition progresses. The 226 Hz tympanogram is likely to display a shallow peak, and this is also reflected in the wideband average tympanogram. Of the two absorbance peaks noted in a normal healthy middle ear, we would expect to see a reduced first peak corresponding to the low frequency region in an otosclerotic ear. In severe cases, this peak may be absent. Ears which present with endolymphatic hydrops, a component of Meniere's disease, will similarly present with normal 226 Hz tympanograms, wideband average tympanograms, ear canal volumes, and resonance frequencies. Furthermore, the absorbance graph will present as normal. In these cases, select the 2000 Hz tympanogram and inspect this graph in either the admittance or conductance view. Select the peak difference and use the indicators to measure the difference between the two peaks presented in this view. A preset protocol with these parameters is provided in the Titan suite. Studies have indicated that in ears with endolymphatic hydrops, this difference will be greater than in normal ears. In cases of semicircular canal dehiscence, the 226 Hz tympanogram, wideband average tympanogram, ear canal volume and resonance frequency will all appear to be normal. In these cases, we must look to the absorbance graph where we could expect to see a positive notch around 1 kHz which would be smaller and more rounded than the similar peak found in other pathologies. To quantify the presence of an abnormal notch, an additional graph can be viewed under the absorbances tab, which provides you with the absorbance deviation from the norm. An increased ear canal volume is an indication of a possible perforation in the tympanic membrane or the presence of a ventilation tube. The 226 Hz tympanogram and wideband average tympanogram will most likely be flat, with the resonance frequency appearing to be normal. A high increase in absorbance in the low frequencies below 1000 Hz is likely to be seen. The smaller the perforation, the higher the absorbance will be. The absorbance value can be close to normal in cases of large perforations. A dip in the absorbance graph may be seen after 1000 Hz with a second peak in the higher frequencies, which is often similar to the second peak found in normally functioning middle ears. It is important to note that multiple pathologies can be present alongside each other, which can alter the presentation of the absorbance graph. Analysis of the average tympanogram, frequency selection and absorbance graphs are the foundations for the assessment of different pathologies.